Welcome to episode one of Pretend I'm Dumb About Star Wars. I'm Tom Merritt. That is the Andrew Allen Trio. Uh, that song is Duel of the Fates from the topic of today's episode, The Phantom Menace, uh, done in jazz style by the fantastic Andrew Allen Trio. If you haven't checked out Andrew Allen Trio, go to andrewallentrio.com. And if nothing else, pick up Live from the Cantina, a Star Wars tribute album. We are going to be doing uh, a look at The Phantom Menace as if I'm dumb about Star Wars. So if you haven't figured out the premise of this podcast yet, uh, my name's Tom Merritt. I'm a podcaster, tech news host, stuff like that. And I, I, as I said in my introductory episode zero, I've been following Star Wars forever. I read the comics, I've seen all the movies a million times, watched the Clone Wars, Rebels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But what if, what if I try to look at these movies with clear eyes? Now, several people said, you don't want to watch the prequels, Tom. Don't do that to yourself. One of them was my wife. But I wanted to watch Phantom Menace. Uh, Not because I think it's intended to be watched one through six, not because I think that the prequels need to be salvaged in some way. I just wanted to say if I knew, if I tried to look at this as if I didn't know anything, if I hadn't been seven years old and fell in love with the world of Death Stars and Alderaan and Princess Leia and Chewbacca and Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, what would I think of this movie? And then go on from there uh, to episode two, three. Four, five, six, and of course, the final, the finale of this short run podcast will be episode seven, The Force Awakens. So, uh, sat down. Now, I am doing the digital versions, the ones that Disney put out recently, which means no 20th Century Fox prelude uh, on the one that I watched, just a Lucasfilm logo. And, uh, and these are definitely enhanced versions, although in the prequels, people don't seem to make that much of a deal uh, about the changes. That have happened in in subsequent versions, but I will be doing that even for episode four, folks, which I am told has had many changes over the years. I'm dumb about Star Wars. I don't know that. Uh, And then I take my nice little moleskin and I make notes as I watch. So here we go to discuss The Phantom Menace. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. This is a tougher one for me. Of the prequels is the one I've seen the most because when it came out, I saw it a bunch of times in the theater. Uh, Star Wars, it struck me. Pretty generic title, Star Wars and the Stars. Who, why didn't anyone think of that before? Seems odd. Uh, the movie starts as if this is a setup of this Galactic Republic versus the Trade Federation, right? And they've picked this planet as their their place to force the controversy. Uh, the Jedi Knights that have been sent, these knights are apparently the good guys, although it seems a little weird that you're sending military folks, and it becomes clear pretty pretty off the bat that one of them is in training. Uh, so this this isn't even like a fully experienced military, guys. You're, you're sending a trainee. He's just learning to run the register. He's got that weird little tail. Uh, the Federation, however, has a full-on evil leader, mysteriously in a black cloak named Lord Sidious. And uh, as in many good tropey movies, cartoon evil equals bad strategy. Let's just start a war! I mean... This is, okay, so I get it. This is not going to be a deep movie. This is an adventure movie right off the top. Uh, why does the Republic care about Queen down down on the planet and the monarchy? Uh, this, is, this is a little weird to me. But one thing I'm noticing is this has got a very Flash Gordon feel. As soon as we've seen the Naboo Queen for the first time, I'm like, all right, we're, we're honoring classic movies of the genre here. We're going with a little Flash Gordon feel. Uh, and then we ramp up to action real quick. Uh, those Jedi Knights are are bounding around with their big swords made of light, and they're bashing on people, and there's uh, robots that are fighting. Uh, we get down to the surface. We have some primitive aliens. I like the fact that we have a planet that's not just all one people like we do in some space movies. Uh, although the good guys act a little like a bully to that to that weird talking guy, uh, this guy here, Jar Jar Binks, uh, he he seems to be a, a nice little primitive alien, although slightly racist in his depiction, perhaps might, some people might think. Uh, also, we get to this underwater city, and again, it's like twenty thousand leagues into the sea. It's all these classic movies, gorgeous locations, Naboo in space with the Trade Federation. This is fantastic, but but why do these primitive aliens only wear burlap, uh, yet they're able to build an entire underwater city uh, where they can breathe underwater? Also, why do they live under the water if they can breathe in the water? 
I guess, I don't know, we live inside and we can breathe air, but we also fill our insides with air. Uh, anyway, don't think too much about it. A lot of her alien speech is a little weird. They mention for the first time something called the force that guides them. Seems like it might be GPS. Uh, I, I don't know if it's a book or a way of living or a religion. Uh, and then boom, we're invaded. Naboo got conquered. That was quick. A little, little fast. Was expecting a battle there. But we get a little swashbuckling uh, action to save the queen. So there we go. We're back to the adventure story. And that's nice. Uh, I don't trust the bearded guy. The bearded guy keeps saying things that you think maybe the Trade Federation would like him to say. So I feel like he's in hawk. I feel like we're being signaled like this guy's a bad guy. He's going to turn on us. Uh, the bad robe guys show up again. And this time uh, they're on their own planet, it seems like. Big city planet. Uh, and uh, he, the uh, Lord Sidious guy's got a trainee. So he's got his own little uh, guy running the cash register, although that guy looks badass. Uh, so it's I get it now. We've got bad robe guys with a trainee, good robe guy with a trainee. They're going to face off against each other, I'm guessing. Uh, okay, venture story about a queen trying to save her planet, planet uh, against the Federation with the help of of the Republic. So we've got the Republic versus the Federation, but it's really the story about a queen trying to save her planet. That's what it seems like at this point. Uh, they they have to crash land, not crash land exactly, but uh, they need parts. So they land on this weird out-of-the-way desert planet. Why they send the astromech droid, which it was very nice of them to reward for, for doing a good job getting them out of a, a hard spot there when they were escaping Naboo. Why he goes on the parts run is not immediately apparent, but then it becomes clear later. He's sort of a glorified iPad. Uh, he has the plans for the part they need. feel like they could have brought something smaller, but okay. Also, why you make the handmaiden go makes no sense to me at all. Um, uh, okay, great location though. Uh, loving all the aliens on the desert planet and uh, really starting to see classic film and serial references. Like I said, Flash Gordon before, this desert planet has a little bit of a Casablanca feel to it uh, here and there. So it's it, it's a cool feeling that they're setting up. This is a vast galaxy with lots of different places. Maybe they should sell the droid if they're short on money for parts. I, I know he was a hero, uh, then we have this weird street fight scene, um, and then a dust storm that we never really get to see, uh, happens and they have to go to this little kid who worked in the junk shop's place to get away from the storm. Things really start to seem like they're dragging at this point. We had space adventure, space adventure, space adventure, and now we're just kind of like muddling around looking for parts. I thought we were going to go get the parts, uh, but we don't have money. I thought we'd move through this a little quicker. Uh, then we have... The bearded guy who I don't trust call it in, trying to trick him into giving away their position, but they're not going to. They're too smart for that. However, uh, somehow, a <laughs> uh, bad robe guy uh, figures out where they are anyway and sends his trainee to go get them without even any supervision. Seems like, like bad on-the-job training. Also, at this point, I'm starting to wonder, why do the bad guys want Naboo so bad? I mean, they've got it. Like, why are they worried about the queen? Just let her go. She she ran away. Why do you care? Uh, it's a little weird. Also, we get the name for uh, the weapons of the knights, uh, the laser sword. Kid says the laser sword, so they must be called laser swords. It's the only thing I hear them uh, referred to as. And then we get to why we've met this little kid in the first place, which at first I thought, oh, he's just another character on the desert planet. That's cool, but he's special. He's got specialness. Uh, so now I get why we were milling around here. However... <laughs> <laughs> it turns out that when the old knight guy says, uh, so who's the father, that the kid's mother says, oh, he didn't have a father. I mean, maybe we're trying to go Greek mythology on this, but it seems like a hard one to swallow. Like, oh, no, no, no father. He was just, you know, um, weird. Also, uh, the primitive alien guy, Jar Jar, uh, this guy here, he uh, he's starting. To, his comic relief is is getting a little old. It was fine for a while, but now it's like kind of feels forced. Uh, and then we have you know the little kid who's a little bit too little kid sometimes would be my criticism of him. All right, but at the halfway mark, the plot seems to be the Federations and their evil robe masters uh, want Naboo, 
maybe for its wealth. Maybe it's just, you know, it's a pretty place. Looks like Venice. Uh, and the Republic is coming to their aid. Uh, and the Queen is headed now to the Republic's capital to plead her case and get aid. Uh, and then we have the subplot of the little boy uh, where uh, the Jedi are not only helping out Naboo, but they find the special boy. So the special boy is going to play into this somehow. We've got we've got two main plot lines. All right, then we get a battle climax. Uh, the bad robot, <laughs> the bad robe trainee uh, is coming for the good robes, and we have the kid uh, decide because he's like special, right? So he's got special piloting powers. He's going to make it uh, make some money in this race. That that that's seems irresponsible uh seems a little bigger than than a local race too all of a sudden we've got a huge arena with people who they say have traveled from all over uh but great aliens very diverse uh spacesuits walking around in the desert town's a nice touch and uh and then we have the race now at first i'm into the race it's exciting you want the little kid to win they need their parts uh, but man, does it go on and on and on. Like, we don't need to see every minute of every lap. Uh, it kind of takes you out of the plot here because we've been dragging on this desert planet for a while anyway with Special Boy. Uh, and, you know, why didn't we sell the droid? I don't know. Anyway, kind of thought that what was going to happen is we'd have a quick look at the race. Bad robe guy might attack during the race. And then there would be like, he'd win the race, he'd get the credits, they'd have to beat off the bad rogue guy. Thought that's where we were going. Battle climax. Turns out there's a little bit of tension in the race. It's dragged out. You've got really dumb announcers uh, who totally sound modern and not from a galaxy far away. And uh, that kind of dampens the tension a bit. Uh, And then bad rogue guy just sort of shows up. Like, next thing you know, they're running. We don't know why they're running. Oh, bad robe guy finally showed up. Okay. And we have like the shortest battle scene ever. Uh, but then we do, we have some really nice touches with uh, the kid from the desert planet being cold and it's cold in space, you know? And I, I know that feeling of being on a plane and being kind of cold. I thought that was, that was a good touch. They also have some, some good touches of him feeling awkward and out, out alone once they get to the Republic's capital. Uh so I'm starting to feel like, okay, what we're set up here is the boy and this handmaiden that he got to know uh, who was sent with the Jedi Knight, they're the underdogs. They're the underdog story uh, vying uh, beneath the panoply of these great powers battling. And then we get to find out, uh, we've been we've been known that the good robe guys are called Jedi Knights. Uh, the bad robe guys are Sith. Then we get into a really weird area. Uh, where the older uh, Jedi Knight guy says that the special boy was conceived by midi-chlorians. Now, midi-chlorians sound like mitochondria to me. I kind of like this idea of a microbial race living in symbiosis with all creatures to provide a bind. That's a cool concept if I'm introduced to that as the first idea of this idea of the force thing. Like, all right, like we're all a symbiotic race. That blows blows my mind. But really, they can conceive people? Okay. Uh, Also, the politics here get really confusing because I thought it was queen of a small planet wants help from the Republic. Turns out queen of a small planet has a senator in the Republic, so I guess they're part of the Republic, but the Queen can also uh, show up in the Senate and talk, not as a special thing, but just, you know, just hanging out, uh, and also apparently make a move of no confidence to remove a leader, even though she's not a senator. That's weird enough, but then the tra- <laughs> the Federation guys, who I, this whole time I'm thinking like, oh, it's the Republic versus the Federation, here's the battle, uh, you know, they've got treaties and stuff between them. The Federation guys have senators, so they're part of the Republic too? So, um, if I get this right, the Republic lets its own members blockade each other and invade each other. This is this is this is really not this is not clear and sort of unnecessary. Uh, then, speaking of clear and unnecessary, we take Special Boy to the Jedi Council and we figure they're going to be all like, "Whoa, wow, Special Boy! What do we do with him?" And 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 I thought it would be like. Old Jedi Knights want to keep control of him. That would make sense. And the council wants him to stay safe. But no, the council doesn't want to train him at all. 
Well, that seems weird. If he's like midichlorian guy conceived by the symbiotic race, wouldn't you? Tra- wouldn't you? Tra- you would. You'd let the Sith get him? Like, oh, we don't want him here. Here, evil people, you take him. Uh, and then the queen says, you know, I'm just gonna leave now. I'm gonna head back to my planet, which is under occupation uh, and under a blockade. Because the Republic won't help me. So the plot line is now a mess. I don't quite understand where anything is going. Uh, and why the boy is called dangerous, I have no I have no clue why he would why this little boy. He's special. I get that. Maybe he's gonna have special powers. If he's dangerous, keep him and train him for goodness sake. All right. Uh so the Jedi go along with the Queen to free Nabu. Seems unlikely and awkward that they would do that. But okay. Uh, but we're back on plot. Uh, Queen's advisors try to tell her it's a bad idea, but she has a plan. Okay. The secret plan of the Queen is why we've been headed here the whole time. Uh, they get to Naboo, and wow, the Federation is bad at a blockade. I don't know how they got down on the surface in the first place, because they just kind of fly right into the planet and land, barely uh, getting trace. And then the Jedi say, we can't use our powers to help you. That kind of was the point of the Jedi's, is that they were your allies, so they would use their powers. That didn't make sense. I do like that the Gungans can come above or below the water. They're not like strictly, they're Aquaman. They can, they can, they can be above or below. That gives them some death. Uh, and then suddenly the handmaiden goes, oh, you know what? I was the queen the whole time. Nobody, nobody noticed that. Nobody thought, oh, wait a minute, that's the queen. Wait, no, that, wait, isn't she the queen? Okay, a little weird. Uh, But I do love where it got us, because uniting the two races of the planet of Naboo uh, is cool. Uh, It kind of makes the Republic irrelevant. Like, couldn't we have just kept this whole story? I mean, I guess that was the point. Maybe the point is to say the Republic is irrelevant. Like, Republic just causes more problems than it's worth, so let's forget about the Republic. Naboo for Naboo, uh, and we all unite. Uh, uh, Back to a clear story. Fight for the freedom of Naboo. The problem is now the special boy story feels unnecessary because we went all the way to the Republic to get the Republic to go, no, we can't help. Also, special boy, we don't want you. I'm not sure why we went there at all. Back to the great battle story, though. I like the daring raid. The Ocean's Eleven led by what we thought was a handmaiden, now a queen. She's got a blaster. She's awesome. We got some Jedi Knights. Uh, I don't know why the special boy is along on the raid. Uh, It seems irresponsible. And to tell him, like, no, go sit in a fighter plane or fighter spaceship. You'll be safe there. Seems pretty crazy. Uh, The droid infantry storage, though, when those machines come out and they just load hundreds and hundreds of droids all fetally folded up and then they come back down. That is impressive. That's good battle. Loving that. Your comic relief guy should not be a general, or he should have some transformation that makes him into a general, and he stops being a comic relief guy. Uh, I heard some theory he's a drunken master. I don't know if that's true. Okay, Uh, bad robe shows up, and now we got some battles going on. Uh, What do we got? We got three, did I say? Three? Three battles? Yeah, three battles. So we've got Queen Ocean's Eleven with her raid on the palace. Uh, We've got the Gungan-Naboo combo versus the droids from the Federation. And now we've got the Jedi Knights versus bad robe guy with the spikes on his head. Um, It does kind of become a four-part raid at some point because the the ships launch. That's part of the raid is like, get the ships launched so the ships can go take out uh, the spaceship above. And and what I'm assuming is end the blockade. Uh, Great sword fight. Don't know where they are. Don't know why there needs to be a place with force fields that come on and off. Sure, there's an explanation somewhere. It's not readily apparent, but it looks cool, so I don't care. Uh, Amazing force field. Also, bad robe guy with the red face can move things with his mind. Stepping up the game there, Jedi Knights. I am sometimes not sure what kind of movie this wants to be. Uh, Sometimes it seems like it wants to be a Charlie Chaplin movie when you've got Comic Relief Guy walking around sometimes it feels like it's an adventure story sometimes it feels like it's a thriller uh which are close you know but uh, i don't know it's kind of all over the place then we get special boy taken off now 
this kind of makes sense. I don't know why they would leave him in the plane in the first place, but since he's in the plane, he's a pilot. We know he's good. He can fix things. That's part of his specialness. So him taking off in the plane makes sense. Why the, it's not a plane, it's a ship. Why the ship has autopilot that takes it to a battle doesn't make sense beyond me. Special Boy would want to just go fight, right? He's cool. He's into that. He's, he's headstrong. Just have him go fight. But no, no, we have autopilot. Uh, and then he gets hit and lands inside the ship they're attacking. I would think they would have shields up, because if you could just fly into that hangar bay, wouldn't everybody on the attacking ships just fly into the hangar bay? Am I wrong there? Okay, uh, bad, bad robe guy, though. Uh, back and forth the bad robe guy. He is too good. Uh, and, pff, spoiler alert, he kills our main hero, uh, the biggest, baddest Jedi Knight of them all. Might be a little, we learned at the council, got a little rogue tendency. Uh, he is gone now. Like, cannot believe that. Stabbed through the heart. I don't think trainee guy can beat that. I mean, trainee guy has not showed us anything this whole movie except that he can operate the communicator pretty well. Uh, now, I guess he did some fighting in the, in the Fe Trade Federation at the beginning, but still. Uh, then, good movie move. Everybody's losing, right? Uh, Queen Ocean's Eleven has now been surrounded, and they've got the the crazy droids with the shields that you can't stop. Uh, you've got the Gungans just getting obliterated by all the droids. Uh, you got the kid who's crash landed in the hangar, and he's surrounded. He's gonna he's gonna be destroyed. Uh, and then and then Decoy Queen shows back up and turns the tables. So we're like, oh, okay, here we go. It's a little bit fast. But okay, really stupid line though. Now we will discuss a new treaty. Really? You just like seized your palace back and you're not going to say, get the F off my planet. You're going to say, let's negotiate another treaty. Uh, still not sure how Special Boy got into uh, the hangar bay. He still is irrelevant uh, because he ends up crash landing and accidentally blowing up the ship that everybody was attacking and trying to blow up. Seems like he could have been put to better use than, than just like, oh, whoops, sorry, I blew up the ship. And apparently one control ship is all that's controlling every uh, droid uh, uh, robot thing on the planet of Nebu. And uh, that's bad redundancy. That's bad design on the part of the Federation. They should look into that. But then good robe trainee guy shows he's got mind control too. He was whole, he was sandbagging it the whole time. He can move, he can move a, a laser sword with his mind. He can slice you in half, bad robe guy. You're dead now, too. Kind of sad because bad robe guy was pretty awesome, but okay. Uh then we have we find out that a hero of our story has not. Uh, died, so trainee runs over and is like, oh, master, you know, you're, you're dying, this sucks, and his dying words are, break all the rules, train special boy anyway, I don't know why, that's just, you know, YOLO, uh, go ahead, train him, uh, so the boy story, now I get, like, really, there was no reason to have the boy in the entire movie, except he needs to be set up for the next movie, obviously, it's gonna be, we're gonna train him anyway, Jedi Council, see if you can stop us, we'll make him into something, uh, so that's that is convoluted, but that's what that was. Uh, then finally, the queen says, "Get off my planet." I, I she changed her mind. We're we're not negotiating, Atreus. I was just kidding about that. Get the f off my planet. Uh, now, old senator guy shows up, uh, and he's been the chan become the chancellor after the move for no confidence. Uh, and apparently, he was at first. I thought he was just a senator who liked the queen and was there to meet her. But then we find out that the queen is part of the Republic and then it's her Senator and he's from there. So, okay. He shows up and gets a little, I'll keep an eye on you special boy. So, you know, with senators, page boys, I don't know if that was such a good idea, but maybe it's just foreshadowing. Uh, okay. So young robe guy then shows up. He's full on Jedi Knight, uh, green, green master, green head of the Jedi council, uh, says, oh, okay, we won't make you do the trials. You're fine. You're good. Uh, but I really don't want you to train special boy. I don't care what your master, what your old dead guy said, don't do it. And, uh, basically young trainee one, Obi-Wan says, F you old man, I'm training the boy. 
and then the, the the old green guy says, "Well, Jedi Council agrees with you now. I don't know. They just changed their mind a lot. I know they were against the boy earlier, but now they're for the boy. So I guess you get to train them. Uh, okay. Uh, fine. Then we go back. Really fast ships because he goes all the way to the Republic uh, to talk to old green guy, and then he goes all the way back uh, to Naboo for the funeral." I don't know why he didn't take the funeral of his master, but Jedi Knight, hero Jedi Knight, Viking funeral, nice touch. I like that. Uh, and then uh, we get old green guy saying, ah, the Sith, they're always two, never more, never less. I don't know why, but obviously that points out that in our next movie, we will meet a replacement for bad robe trainee we'll get a new bad robe trainee hopefully he will be bad as well and then we have a big happy parade the gungans and naboo friends forever big glow ball and i'm like all right all right there were some real weak spots big old plot holes you could drive one of those uh droid robot storage vans through but we had a nice adventure story in there uh Kind of, kind of annoying casting, kind of annoying direction here and there, uh, but we had a space adventure. So what I would assume I would get next is more of the story of Naboo fighting for freedom, uh, maybe trying to spread the freedom, uh, Federation guys and their dark boss, uh, you know, retaking something, trying to get back at him. It's going to be Naboo versus the bad Sith guys. Uh, I don't know why we need the Republic, but I feel like since they made such a big deal about that senator becoming a chancellor, that that's going to play in. Maybe he's going to help the Naboo out, uh, and and there'll be a bigger fight. And obviously, Special Boy uh, is going to be all trained up, uh, or in the, in the training uh, next time we see him. So there we go. That is my attempt to pretend I'm dumb about star wars uh hope you enjoyed it and uh folks let me know in the in the uh comments below what you thought uh if you're watching it or just uh you know post uh post on tommerit.com uh a response there if you're listening and let me know what you think i will see you after i've watched episode two which i hear is called attack of the clowns AndrewAllenTrio.com, folks. Go buy the album.